Welcome to Spaceverse, your portal to cosmic adventures. Titan, Saturn's moon, is covered in hazy orange clouds, and it is here that one of the greatest mysteries in our solar system is concealed. There is a world below that is comparable to ours, yet it is also strange, unfamiliar, and difficult to understand. Clearly, we must reach the moon and carry out our own inquiry in order to determine with certainty what is going on in the universe. NASA intends to utilize a helicopter powered by nuclear energy to explore Titan in search of extraterrestrial life during their next Dragonfly mission. Based on what we know so far, we are amazed by Titan. The only moon in our solar system that has an atmosphere is the one that has an atmosphere four times denser than that of Earth. Just like Earth, Titan's atmosphere is mostly made up of nitrogen. On the other hand, Titan's atmosphere is made up of methane, which is frequently referred to as natural gas. This is very different from the pleasant blend of oxygen that makes up Earth's atmosphere. The thick atmosphere creates a reverse greenhouse effect, which stops the small quantity of solar heat from reaching this distance. As we get closer to the surface, the methane cools down enough to turn into a liquid, then, it rains down against an ice surface that is as hard as granite. Because of this, Titan's surface is covered in rivers, lakes, and seas of methane, making it the only known world with an active hydrological cycle and stable liquid on its surface, excluding Earth, of course. Titan features a variety of ecosystems, similar to those found on Earth. The moon's equator is home to massive deserts that are interspersed with rocky beaches and huge dunes that have been shaped by the wind. On the other hand, this is not sand, it is a granular biological substance that has also fallen from the sky and landed on the freezing rock surface. We do not know what this substance is or where it comes from, and it is still uncertain whether it can support life if the right conditions are met. Titan, the planet of life, has a lot of water. There is a saltwater ocean beneath the surface that is always changing temperature, which means that it never freezes. It is not unusual for water to wash up onto the surface in the form of slushy lava from a cryovolcano from time to time. Titan is a moon that, like Earth, has a surface that is constantly changing and renewing itself. This is because there are very few impact craters that have left their traces on Titan's surface. When these components are united, they produce the four fundamental building blocks of life, water, nitrogen, carbon, and organic molecules. However, the conditions on Titan make it appear like life, at least in its current form, cannot exist on this planet. However, we recognize that there is still a lot we do not know about the universe and the fundamental nature of existence. As a result, we are hoping that our trip to Titan will give us new information. This is not the first time we have traveled to the distant moon of Saturn. The Cassini mission, which began its orbital study of the solar system in 1997 and lasted for a long time afterward, obtain the data that forms the basis of our current understanding of Titan. On the other hand, Cassini also included an additional one-of-a-kind payload, a lander called Huygens, which was named after the Dutch scientist, who was the first to discover Titan at night. The thick cloud that encircles the entire moon makes distant Titan research impractical. We ought to meet in person. After Cassini dropped the lander Huygens over Titan, it descended into the atmosphere, which was extraordinarily thick and incredibly high. Titan is named for the fact that its enormous atmosphere makes it seem like the moon is much bigger than it really is. After the parachute was deployed, Huygens took 2.5 hours to reach the surface of Titan. It was able to snap these photographs when it broke through the dense barrier and landed. To jog your memory, these are photographs that were taken with a digital camera in the middle of the 1990s and transmitted live to Earth through the Cassini mission, which is located more than 1 billion kilometers away. Because of this, the quality is not very good. On the other hand, rivers and streams of liquid methane have cut their paths through the frozen granite walls. Huygens landed on the soft, sandy bottom of a riverbed that had dried up. These rocks were eroded and polished, making them look like river stones on Earth. That was the last thing it saw before it turned off. However, this is ice, not rock. Therefore, it is essential that we return to the surface of Titan to collect further information. This is precisely why the Space Agency developed the Dragonfly rover. This is the first time we have come across a rover like this. 
It is more similar to a modern quadcopter drone than anything else. Mars is the only other planet where humans have flown anything. It has 37% of Earth's gravity and less than 1% of Earth's air density. As a result, it was a pleasant surprise when NASA was able to successfully fly their Ingenuity drone. Mars Ingenuity has successfully completed 72 flight missions over its three years of existence. NASA collected a tremendous amount of information about commanding unmanned aerial vehicles UAVs, from millions of miles away while in orbit. They are now using that information in their Dragonfly project, but they aim to expand it significantly, and a larger UAV requires a larger power supply. Dragonfly will have to deal with a lot of cloud cover and distance from the sun, unlike Ingenuity, which was powered by a small solar panel. As a result, NASA needs to deploy nuclear power, the same type that has been powering Mars rovers since Curiosity in 2011, to explore Titan. This is not what you would imagine when you think of a nuclear reactor in a power station. A chunk of plutonium that decays into heat is a basic part of the radioisotope thermoelectric generator used by these interplanetary explorers. The generator converts that heat into electricity. The average dragonfly weighs around 450 kilograms and is a little longer than 3 meters. Titan, on the other hand, is much smaller than Earth, thus it will have a gravitational pull that is just 14% as strong as Earth's. That is almost the same as the moon's gravity. Flying is easy and a fantastic way to get around on Titan because of its thick atmosphere and low gravity. Dragonflies, like other octocopters, feature eight propeller blades, each of which is slightly more than one meter in diameter. This design has some redundancy built into it. The aircraft is capable of flying without them, but placing one on each corner guarantees that the mission will not be interrupted if a propeller breaks. Because this is a very expensive and time-consuming project for NASA, it is extremely important. Dragonfly, which has been in development since 2017, is an evolution of an earlier concept that would have launched a balloon to float over Titan. It is notoriously difficult to establish timelines for huge space exploration missions like Dragonfly. However, the launch window is currently slated for July 2028. NASA has already booked the SpaceX Falcon Heavy for the job. Even with the Falcon Heavy's immense power as a launch vehicle, it will still be a challenge to reach Titan in a reasonable amount of time. The probe will be sent to Venus first. After that, Dragonfly will take advantage of Venus's gravity and use it to slingshot around the planet. It re-enters Earth and executes a second slingshot utilizing gravity to enhance its speed even higher. Following that, Dragonfly makes its way to Titan. This task will take an average of six years to finish. Dragonfly will arrive at Saturn in 2034. Saturn is 1.2 billion kilometers away from Earth. The spacecraft will bypass the orbital decline phase and perform a direct ballistic entry on its final approach to Titan. We are striking Titan like a cannonball. The entry capsule is just a heat shield that has a dome-like cover on it when it separates from the engine of its cruising stage. When Dragonfly lands on Mars in 2021, it will use a heat shield that is quite similar to the one that NASA used with the Perseverance rover. You should feel the heating phase during the first six minutes after you enter. That is when things begin to become overwhelming. However, as the probe enters Titan's atmosphere, a supersonic drogue parachute will open to start slowing down the probe, just like it does for a Mars rover. I hope that this period will be a little less stressful. The first parachute that a Dragonfly uses will allow it to descend for 80 minutes. After we have slowed down to a comfortable speed, we will remove the heat shield and release the main parachute. The final portion of the descent takes an additional 20 minutes. Dragonfly will not be able to land on Titan using its parachute, which adds another layer of stress about 1.3 kilometers above the surface. Dragonfly will detach from the parachute and use its own propulsion system, just like the most recent Mars landers. Instead of rocket engines, which have been utilized on Mars, Titan will feature propellers. This drone is currently being put through its paces. There are two possible outcomes. It either works right away or it fails completely. If it works properly, Dragonfly will hover and slowly fall to the surface of Titan. The designated landing place is located in the Shangri-La region. In James Hilton's 1933 book Lost Horizon, there is a reference to a fictional mountain range in Tibet. 
This Titanian territory is an interesting choice because it is more similar to Frank Herbert's Dune reality than any other territory. Dragonfly will touch down on a flat area that is surrounded by enormous dunes that have been driven by the wind on all sides. These dunes stretch for hundreds of kilometers and have an average height of 100 meters and an average width of 1 to 2 kilometers. Titanian sand is different from Earthian sand since it does not contain silicates. When solid hydrocarbons fall from the sky, it looks like very hard, gritty snow as if gasoline were used to generate the snow. Because carbon is the basic building block of all known forms of life, these granules, which are made of carbon, are considered to be organic molecules. While that does not provide evidence that they are alive, it does imply that the right conditions may potentially bring them to life. Those particular instances are still mostly unknown at this time. If these chemical molecules are mixing with the underlying water on Titan, there is a possibility that life is lurking there. In any scenario, Dragonfly will begin its probe with that. The drone will do most of its scientific work on the ground, even if it is capable of flying. Drills are Dragonfly's main instrument for breaking up frozen ground and producing loose dust. The drone can then inhale this dust like a vacuum and transfer it through a network of tubes to a device that collects samples. Dragonfly always uses a different little container for each sample it collects. After that, the container is taken inside and placed in a machine that utilizes a laser to break the sample down into its individual molecules, which makes it possible to identify them. If the chemical makeup of the sample is found to be interesting, the container is placed in an oven inside Dragonfly. The molecules are then vaporized, turning them into a gas that can be analyzed further to learn more about their unique chemistry. Researchers are looking for biosignatures, which are the specific things they are seeking to find. These features would be displayed by the simplest forms of bacterial life. The main idea is that Titan's current condition is quite similar to what we think the early Earth was like. At that time, hydrocarbons fell from the sky and combined with water, forming the primordial soup from which all life forms originated. That's the main point. Dragonfly will spend three Earth years, or 764 Titan days, flying over dunes and settling in the valleys between them while performing this inquiry. Dragonfly is expected to go about 180 kilometers and visit 24 different places. The Dragonfly flies once every Titan day, which is equivalent to once every 16 Earth days. It travels to collect samples during the day and will study them till the next day at dawn. The majority of its mission will involve surface activities, such as collecting measurements and sending data back to Earth. While the mission launches amidst barren sand dunes, the spacecraft will spend its final days investigating Selk, a massive crater where organic compounds may have combined with liquid water following an asteroid impact that broke through the ice barrier. Dragonfly does not intend to go to the methane seas, which are the only intriguing place in the cosmos. In fact, it is quite unlikely that the drone will come into contact with any of the liquid on the surface. There is a reasonable explanation for this, even though it may seem discouraging. A lot of experts believe that Titan was once fully covered by water. The surface liquid has been slowly draining away for billions of years, but it is now almost completely contained at the North Pole of the Moon. In order to find it, we need to go in that way. To make matters worse, one of the most difficult obstacles a person can encounter is landing on the polar regions of a planet or moon. It would be extremely dangerous to try to do the same operation on Titan, which is 1 billion kilometers away, while we are still struggling to land on the south pole of our own moon. If the spacecraft were to travel that far and then crash, it would be a disaster for NASA. So, the most logical option is to land close to the equator. The key to a successful mission of this size is to keep things simple. Titan will not be going anywhere for the foreseeable future. We can distribute the scientific task among us. It is impossible to predict what the geniuses of the next decade will be able to achieve. We'll be able to send even more amazing spacecraft into the far reaches of the solar system, outfitted with the latest technology and rockets, and discover secrets that we never knew were there. Dragonfly is definitely something to look forward to, as it is an amazing first step toward expanding our reach far beyond Earth. And that's it. Thanks for joining us on this cosmic journey. 
If you enjoyed this dive into the future of space exploration, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you never miss an update from Spaceverse. Until next time, keep looking up.